Welcome back to Sweet Beat TV. I'm your host, Caitlin Fashe, and today I'm joined by the Vamps. Hey guys, how's everyone doing? Good, how are you? I'm, I'm good, thank you for asking. First things first, congratulations are in order. Your new song, Married in Vegas, is so good, you guys. I had it on uh, yesterday. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. That's very kind. It's a big shout out. Very sweet. Yeah, of course. I want to talk about Married in Vegas, though, because this is the first song that you're dropping off your new album, Cherry Blossom. So how did you guys decide that Married in Vegas was going to be the first release from the album? So, by the way, before we go on, you've absolutely nailed the colors on the background. I don't know if that was intentional yeah. or not, but you've got, you've got the uh, cherry blossom agreed. aesthetic on the background. It's great. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, we, and we've been writing the album for like two years over the course of like Airbnbs and hotel rooms and 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 all over the place really. And we kind of decided the singles. So we'd handed the album over with what we thought was going to be. We're like, this we think should be first, this should be second. Um, and then the day that it got handed over, went on a Zoom call with uh, the guy who we kind of co-produced a lot of the album with and ended up writing Married in Vegas. And I think it was a very natural process uh, and it got sent around to like amongst the four of us um, and then also onto the label and our team. And it was kind of like, we'd never done a really impulsive move before or like, uh, or like really gone with that gut. We were very, we were always very considered with decisions, but Married in Vegas was one of those songs that came around really quick. It felt really, felt really good to all of us. It felt like, it was the right first step back. So it was it was a bit of a like spontaneous last minute edition. It kind of beat all the other ones right at the end. Um, but it was quite, it's quite nice for us. We've never done that. And I think it's a lesson in trusting your gut because it was absolutely the right choice for us to do that first. I agree, it's such a great song. I think you started out with a bang and it's only gonna get better from here. <laughs> but like you said, this is your fifth studio album and it has been two years in the making. So I wanna know how you guys think your sound has elevated from your last studio album to this one. Um, well, like, I guess, yeah, it, it has been two years. Uh, and in that time, we've done a lot of growing as people, but also, I guess, as musicians and uh, producers um, and I think just having a couple of years to really harness our craft has been uh, crucial in this album so uh, a lot more time has been taken this time around on making sure that every sound uh, even down to like the sound of snare drums like was really like perfect and I think we took a lot more yeah a lot more time in making sure that, that was exactly what we wanted for this album and I think that has consequently meant that this album is sonically slightly different slightly tighter almost um, than than the last one but, all, but also we've, we've focused a lot more on uh, like fundamental instruments than perhaps the last one so the last album had quite a lot of synth um, on it this time we really you know do center around what we play bass guitar guitar drums and vocals and piano as well I love it well I can't wait to hear the rest of the songs but I want to know where did this name cherry blossom come from does it have a significant meaning to you guys or it does we were yeah we were on a trip to Japan um, and a couple of us had stayed out so James stayed out and I stayed out in Japan and we worked together we were on our separate journeys at that point our separate journeys within Japan um, then I can't remember I think it was like we'd never really got the chance to really immerse ourselves in a lot of the cultures of places we've gone purely because you don't get enough time to do that uh, and I think having that time uh, for, for me especially in Japan was really really inspiring so I kind of came up with the idea of cherry blossom because that is their kind of like a very symbolic in their culture and I think reading up on that it was like this feels so fitting for where the four of us are as a band and the four of us are as people as well so I came back and then kind of like we we spoke about it and it felt like the right right move for the album and it kind of captured everything that we've been speaking about um and then that really was like the spark that ignited the writing process for it because I think once we had cherry blossom it's a very um 
I kind of I think it's quite visceral. It brings a lot of like images to mind and colours. So after that, we could we could kind of start running with real concepts, and um, and the album just kind of came together really quickly after that. That's awesome. That's really cool. That's a cool story. You guys were in Japan. You're like, hey, new album name. Let's go. <laughs> Um, yeah, literally. I want to talk about tour because you have been on some epic world tours. So once coronavirus is over and you're allowed to do so, you guys plan to go back on tour and perform this new album? Definitely. As soon as we can get out on the road, you know, in a safe environment when it's okay to do so, we are going to be um, everywhere and anywhere that we can be. You know, we're going to just tour as much as we can, because we miss the touring. Touring is you know, such an important part of music. It's, it's where everyone comes together and it, it's, it's where everyone parties. So so when we can party together, um, we're there, 100%. Yes, I'm sure fans will be looking forward to that. But I have one last question. This is a fun one. I want to know, do you guys have any epic, funny, maybe embarrassing things that have happened to you on tour that you can share with us? The, the Marriott. The, the Marriott. On, on the top of the Marriott at the end of the night. It was so funny. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, that was such a funny one. What we happened? Came, we, we just, it was really surreal. Like, we'd finished a gig, uh, and I can't remember where we were, but we ended up going upstairs to the top floor for, like, just a kind of couple of after show drinks and to kind of chill out a bit. And then we ended up getting chatting to this group of people who were really, really nice, but it turned out they were like, Weren't they like the forks and spoons in the production of what was the what was the Beauty thing? and the Beast? Beauty and the Beast. Oh yeah, that was. So the, like, I was talking they about were the dancers. Yeah, yeah, the Philipp in Philippines, in the Philippines. Yeah, um, and then you tip the waiter. And then they like seven hundred dollars in Australian dollars oh, uh, right. in, in the Philippines. Oh, seven hundred dollars of a tip. No. <laughs> It wasn't a tip, it was like a, we set up a bill, but <laughs> it would have been a very, very oh, good God. night for that. <laughs> oh I thought we were talking about the, the forks and spoons. They ended up like doing a semi rendition of Beauty and the Beast upstairs. Ah. It was very, it was, uh, I would have paid $700 to watch that. Chris yeah. became a spatula. <laughs> he did at one point. It was a great yeah. night. Great oh my night. God, that's funny. Well, yeah. thank you guys so much for your time. You guys are a blast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Yes, and you guys at home, make sure you stream Married in Vegas and pre-order Cherry Blossom. And as always, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to Sweetie High, and drop a comment down below. I'm Caitlin Sashay, and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye. Hey. Woo! Thank you. Yeah.